Don't mind me. I'm just going to be hiding under my Declaration of Independence blanket. JK, I was not going to make a special video for Inauguration Day. I was going to do something more fun instead. So let's do something fun. Let's get a haunted vessel. I'm in the middle of picking one out right now. And I'm reading about spirit keeping. And I want to talk about it. It's very interesting to me. There's some points about it that I want to go over. Some things that I just generally question. So far, creepy dolls. Yeah, there's a lot of creepy dolls on Etsy, which is weird. <coughs> they have these sites that are especially for spirit keeping. And I feel like I can tell by how these people write. A lot of people say that they choose to be and i hate to use the word bound and because they, they say that it's it doesn't really describe they say the word bound is not really accurate then why are they using it well ha use another word then i mean i've been a practicing witch for a long time and granted i haven't heard about the spirit keeping from what i hear it's just it's a very personal choice and there's media going back on it to like 2012 but people are very private about it because obs it's a very controversial thing and people are very judgmental so anyway i saw a verbs and alters video on it and i thought i want to try this so yesterday was my first day of looking for vessels and from what she said if you're tapping into them then they can somehow tap into you and see what kind of environment they might want to go to, which I think is pretty cool. So I was hoping that maybe I would dream about something or someone. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard for me to remember my dreams. So I am going to start keeping a dream journal, but I want to show you so far some of the vessels that I've found and some of the drawbacks also. Figured while I am sitting here with my little treatments on, I would sit down and go through some of these websites. The first one that I found was creepyhollows.com, and that seems to be the most popular, well-known website for this sort of thing. Just kind of a one-stop, new-age shop, but also includes a lot of information about spirit keeping. I'm looking for something that's vetted, something that's not gonna fuck me up, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be inviting in Annabella. This ain't no paranormal activity. Spirit binding with vessel. Okay, keeping spirits as companions. That sentence alone, I have a problem with. The whole concept of keeping, it makes it sound like it's some sort of a pet, doesn't it? I don't even talk about my cat that way. Am I wrong? It says Creepy Hollows is the birthplace of modern day spirit keeping. I don't know if that's true, but I do know this is the one that was most heavily mentioned overall. It goes into what modern day spirit keeping is, which is the conjuring and binding of spirits to be companions. So does that mean someone is conjuring them, trapping them, and then sending them to you? I'm just going to re reserve my judgment on that until later. We have angel spirits, creature spirits, custom conjuring spirits, dark arts spirits, which, like, why? Uh, jinn, which, no, you, you don't want a jinn spirit. Elf spirits fairy spirits which i would go for something like that if i was going to do it familiars which would be animals gargoyle spirits which i don't know why human spirits which you do not want no immortals mm, i would probably say no but why why, why the, the fuck, fuck would you want a nursery infant child spirit <sighs> That's not spooky at all. The next thing I saw that freaked me out was nympho spirits. And no, they don't mean a nymph, like a cute little tree nymph. They're 
sexual beings. Who were born strictly from passion, ecstasy, and pleasure. It, it seems to be true, in, in these circles at least, that you can sexually interact with these spirits. I just want to kind of do this for an experiment, but I don't want my life to get fucked up. Here's the rest of the spirits. I thought it would be good to go to the spirits for beginners and see what that's all about. This is where I find the first thing that doesn't freak me out so bad. The Custom Conjure Browin Angel. Bronwyn Angel. They're an order of astral being that falls between the eternal cosmos and the ceilings of the stars. They are an omnipotent race, giving them the powers of omniscience and omnipresence. They are a benevolent race of entities capable of exercising powers unlike any you've seen. They are capable of inspiring human function and behavior to create masterpieces and miracles, just as they are capable of yielding a warrior spirit, bringing victory and destruction of evil. They cover all ranges, aspects, and sides of the world and its inhabitants. That sounds really good, actually. They have diverse magical abilities. I want to take you to someone's page in Etsy. Ooh, she's spooky. This is a shop that came to my attention. At first it scared me, and then I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I went back to it and just started looking around. I was just so impressed with the illustrations and the jewelry. They look like real beings. Ooh, what is this, an ice dragon? The question that I have is like, where are you summoning these spirits from? And do they want to be here? She has a lot of dark symbolism. She also has five star reviews. So she knows what she's doing. When I look at her reviews, it seems everyone has bonded with their companions and they seem happy. But let me tell you why I'm skeptical of everyone. This article happened to be the first thing that I found when I was researching spirit keeping, and it definitely made an impression on me. The author talks about how he's against the sale of bound vessels, and he refers to it as the unethical practice of spirit keeping. He recognizes that there is a ceremonial meaning for this type of thing, but that he reiterates he's specifically against the sale of bound vessels. Goes on to tell this story, and the story is kind of unbelievable. I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you. I'm going to tell you my story and speak from my experience and why this has me so upset. Let us go back to about two months ago when a friend encountered a large group of spirits that she could not identify. She is not new to the craft, and she is most certainly not stupid when it comes to identifying entities or their origins. Confused as she was, she came to myself and a fellow witch for assistance. What I saw horrified me. There were hundreds of human souls that had this thick, black, oily substance all over them and energy signatures of angels, demons, and gods alike. It was chaotic and swirling all around them. The sound of them mumbling, I don't know who I am, we don't know who we are, is something that was not only deafening, but I will never forget it. My soul is forever haunted by what I saw that day. Slowly, my sister witch was able to heal them and send them on their way, but we never could place why the human souls had energy overlapping their own. Any practitioner knows that even in death, the human soul has free will. Remember the story. I will tie it in at the end. This same sister witch is very active among the polytheist community, and because of this, she has quite the following and friend list. I'm skeptical, but at the same time, this is how we socialize now, so it could be possible. Back to the sister witch. She always posts fun things, interesting things, and people are quick to comment. So being the nosy stalker that I am, I always read the comments. This one day, a name hit me like a two by four to the face, and I took note that she had no soul. We all have souls, I hear you folks now. 
I'm telling you, she had no soul. The soul that once belonged to her was claimed by so many entities and in so many fragments that I don't even know how she is alive. I don't know how you would be able to tell something like this by a comment thread. But, I mean, clearly this person felt like they knew in an instant just by seeing the person's name that they had no soul. Well, he goes on, I have seen humans with no soul, we can debate later, but not a human who had a soul and essentially lost it, sacrificed it through poor choices and actions. This woman was tormented beyond anything I have ever seen, and it was all self-imposed. I was fascinated, but as badly as I wanted to look further, I did not because my sense told me danger. Not that I was in danger, but that the situation, the woman, just me picking up the scent of what was happening was dangerous and sent my guides into a bitch fit. They made sure I knew that I was not to go digging anymore. They should know me better by now, though. That same day, about five hours later, I received a message from a fellow witch of a screenshot. It was a picture of a piece of jewelry for sale by that woman. Mind you, I told no one about how my intuition made me feel regarding this woman. I was so freaked out by the synchronicity that I had to put my phone down and collect myself. This woman sells bound vessels and has been doing so for years. Apparently, she is known as a great conjurer, insert eye roll, because she traps spirits to vessels and sells them. She is a great conjurer. I had to go look and see for myself how deep this went, and what I found made my blood boil, my hands shake, and my rage blind me. Before I continue on with what happened next and how it ties into the souls I mentioned in the beginning, let me say that I do not believe at any point in time that a spirit needs to be bound to a vessel. This is my personal opinion, you're entitled to yours. I have found myself needing to do so when working with gin, and after the bidding was done, they were rewarded and released. I would never in my mind think to bind spirits to trinkets, art, or pieces of jewelry and sell it to people, claiming that it will bring them protection, luck, love, etc. Enchanting people's jewelry with the deity's essence is an entirely different practice. This is about ethics, people. Spirits are not our play toys, and in my entire life of practice, I have yet to encounter a spirit who wishes to be bound to a vessel. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but how common can it really be if I, nor anyone in my immediate witch circle, have encountered this? If this is so common, why are the witches I confided in as appalled as I am that this even exists? He seems to be in the middle of a bitch fit. Let me see if there's anything else that he finally gets back to the story here. My chin has a hole in it. Curiosity got the best of me. I finally went to this woman's page and found an album along with several posts of bound vessels. She promised people that there was a portal in one, a high watcher in another, and it just carried on and on and on. As the days went by, I came to find out through a series of dreams and two divinational sittings that this woman was responsible for those human souls I mentioned earlier. My guides confirmed it for me. Apparently, she would promise these human souls who were trapped in the in-between, whatever their heart most desired, then she would put a different energy signature over their own. I don't even know how she did that part. I have my theories, and I don't think it would be too difficult, but I can't imagine that the human soul or the energy that she tapped into for the signature is or was too happy about this. Her deteriorating physical and mental health are proof of that. Tisk tisk, silly witch. And trust me, I know how this all sounds. I thought that witch wars were the lowest our community would go. Surely we could not descend any further. But now we have this. I'm sorry, what's witch wars? I don't talk to I don't talk to people, I don't have a community. We not only owe it to those whom we are helping, teaching and or healing to give them our all, but we owe it to the spirits we work with. Half assed attempts of conjuring along with fake bindings are not giving them your all. It's making a mockery of the ancient ways and I hope the old gods fucking devour you. Well, tell us how you really feel. For some reason, this scathing article kind of stuck in my psyche because it was one of the first things that I read concerning spirit binding. And there were a lot of good points in it, I have to say. I keep asking why they would want to connect to a vessel, how they do it, etc. 
So one of the things I came across was on eBay, just this one coven and they kind of tell you a little bit about their process, which is comforting. So here's how they describe how the transfer takes place. The spirit entered into this vessel on their own and agreed to do this, not by force, capture, or trap. Wheezy connected to an entity in a way that this vessel acts as a gateway between realms, inhabited by a spirit for a gateway to its power. Wheezy is the name of the elder. Why would they agree to a binding? These entities are highly in need of our ascent and their descent. They want us to grow, know, prosper, love, share wisdom, knowledge, power, etc. And in return, also want their energy in this world, giving them a home, vessel, offerings, and keeper who treats them with respect. A vessel acts as a portal through which their power, energy, presence may flow, which is a great benefit for them and of course for us, which a bond is created. The vessel is a place where the entity dwells, when in this plane, as well as the gateway through which its power flows, forming a small group to manifest our spirituality of different beliefs and religions to cross our paths of magic. We have tested many different conjurings. These talismans came from around the globe we have come to call ourselves the fourth realm, something outside the range of ordinary experience. No work, spell, or ritual is needed for these entities to make contact. Get all pictures of the item you are seeing. If you feel a connection, have dreams, constant visions of the offering, then this is right for you. Last photo is of Wheezy, a 95-year-old high priestess who started practicing in the late 1930s, and we are very blessed she is alive today to assist us. This is the one that I had my eye on. Haunted Vampering of Stealth. I don't know why it's calling to me, but it just is. It's calling to me. This stunning haunted ring to a spirit connection of a female vampire. Her age is not known. I know very little about this spirit, only that she was bonded by Wheezy to this ring. She is shy, stealthy, and her beauty attracts those who wish for her to dive deep into your world. Hmm. So anyway, this is another person who I trust, and I'm thinking I might... I also don't want to, like, buy a bunch of ghosts. That would be weird. They have a living angel. I don't know how this even works. Elite living entities of white hearts. Bonding service for living entity. Create a powerful bond between you and any living entity of your choice. What in the fuck is going on right now? That's a master entity. I keep seeing that, too. It's an entity who's a leader amongst your entity family. They're peacekeepers, organizers. So anyway, when I was putting that brown one angel in my cart, which was $6.95, I also noticed a brown one angel that was living, and it cost $50. I said, what? An angel isn't good enough for you? You want a living angel? You want fucking Tinkerbell? And here's my receipt for the angel that I purchased that sounds so strange. Well, I've joined the Creepy Hollow and made my purchase. So after that, I went over to the Scary Lady's Etsy. And the more I looked at her jewelry, I saw that none of the rings were in my size. And then I saw this one really beautiful necklace. <laughs> decided to write her and ask if she could make something custom for me and I told her a little bit of what I was into. So the moon dragon lady wrote me back. She'll see what she can do. I'm very optimistic. I don't know how long that one is going to take but I've ordered two different spirited items. I have 
equipment to measure EMF frequencies. I also have dowsing rods, EVP stuff. There's a lot of different ways I can try to investigate them. I'm excited to see if anything happens tonight, having put my plans into play. These are the 24 karat gold ones. They actually have gold and hyaluronic acid in them. I love to use them at night, like twice a week. They're a special little treat for my under eyes. I've been trying to wear less makeup lately, so I'm all about skincare. Oh, speaking of which, there's a little, little patch over there. Anyway, very excited to get these spirited items and experiment with this. We'll see what kind of results I get. I can't wait for them to come.